Hi, welcome to this new tutorial. One of the weak points of MeshLab stands pro most probably in the selection features, especially if compared with the, the commercial alternatives. Uh, we hope in the future to find some time to uh, implement uh, other selection features like the use of polyline. But uh, actually, in the last release of MeshLab, there were a couple of more uh, features for the selection of point clouds. The selection of point clouds is a quite a tricky problem because uh, you don't have uh, any information given by the surface, for example, about what part of the surface is facing you and what part is back face. So it's much harder to define, to try to understand what the user is trying to select. Well, the two new features of MeshLab uh, are these two buttons that you can find here. One is the first one is related to the selection of vertex clusters, and it works in a quite easy way. Uh, so suppose that I want to select this column uh, I just need to pick in some point on the column and then I keep my left button pressed and I start moving the mouse you see that the selection starts growing if following the, the neighbors of the point that I picked uh, and uh, increasing the radius uh, of uh, selection so in this way it's much easier to select clusters of point so for example, if I want to select the column and I want to add this one, I can use, for example, the control button to make, uh, to add the new selections. And I can be quite precise. Okay. I can play moving the mouse, uh, increasing or reducing the, the selection part like this. Okay. But at the same time, I can also uh, increase and reduce the selection uh, and using the alt button and uh, the wheel so I'm changing without moving the mouse now I'm increasing and reducing the selection in this way mm. you can see the instruction which has also written on screen and uh, also the opening threshold so the threshold that defines when I can jump from one cluster of points to another cluster of points can be changed by using the wheel of the mouse so using this cluster selection uh, should be quite easy, for example, to select all the, all the columns which are on the, on the scene. Another way to select points is uh, another uh, feature which is uh, essentially based on selection of planes. Okay, it works in a similar way, so you need to click in the place where you're interested to extract the selection, and as you move the mouse, the points which are part of the plane, which is defined by the, the, the points in the proximity of the place where you picked with the mouse, are selected. And again, you can use the, the control and uh, left click to add a new selection, or the shift to remove part of the selection. At the same time, you can also, like in the other filter, instead of moving the mouse, you can press Alt and use the wheel to increase or decrease the selection portion. Okay. So this works in a very similar way, but it follows another rule. And uh, yeah, it tries to extract portions of a plane. So supposing that you want to select this wall, and you want to keep it, and you want to remove the rest of the, of the point cloud, what you need to do is to select the plane you're interested in okay so you can play with the filter okay once that you select that you can just invert the selection i'm inverting only the vertices because there are no faces around and you can remove the points okay and now you have the the wall you were interested in uh, so the selection of the planes clearly is can be very useful when uh, you're dealing with the architectural models when you can find planes uh, like walls or floors, uh, ceiling uh, and so on. Uh, while the cluster selection uh, may be extremely useful when you need to clean point clouds, for example when you have to remove the vegetation 
or uh, the people uh, which we have been acquired with the scanner and in this way it's very fast to acquire these clusters of points which are not part of the scene you were trying to acquire so these two new features probably will help you a lot especially when you're dealing with this data coming from time of flight or phase shift scanner uh, please feel free to experiment with them uh, the, the, most, both the feature can be a bit slow at the startup when you're dealing with very big point clouds uh, but then uh, they should be able to work fine. Thank you.